Welcome Ashen Ones back to Hotgates Gaming for another Dark Souls the board game video this time a video you've all been asking for which is a painting tutorial of how to paint the board game pieces and we're going to start off that series with a how to paint the knight playing character for Dark Souls the board game let's get down and get started Welcome to my painting station. In this tutorial video I'm going to assume that all of you out there have never painted a miniature in your life. So we're going to go through some basics to start off. I am going to try and evolve these videos over the course of the series to give off some more advanced techniques. But one of the reasons we're starting off with the knight is because he's one of the easiest to paint. And I'm going to go right through the beginning from brushes, what you need to have with you and how to set up your painting stations. Uh, so it's a good idea always to get yourself a little pot of water. I'm using uh, a mug here, it's absolutely fine, which of course I don't drink out of. We've got a palette, so a palette is where you're going to be mixing your water and your paints on. You can buy yourself a proper professional palette or you can do what I do, which is just use old Tupperware lids. Uh, it's a good idea to have some kitchen roll handy just to wipe your brushes down. If you need to take a little bit of excess paint off your brushes or, uh, or water, uh, you can do that as well. And then, of course, your brushes. Now, you can uh, get sort of standard painting brushes from uh, like a hobby craft or even going direct to the likes of Games Workshop. I like to use Army Painter brushes for my uh, fine detail painting, uh, but then I also like to use the Element Games range of brushes as well. So you can go and check those out. I'll put them in the link below if you have no idea at all. So when it comes to painting the night or painting any miniature, the first thing that you need to do is you need to prime these models. And we need to do that so the rest of the paint is going to stick to them. Now, most people like to prime in one of three colors, although this does change. You can either prime a model in black, in gray, or in white, and each has benefits and drawbacks. So if you prime in white, you're gonna get a much brighter finish uh, when you're applying other colors on. And this can be very good if you are actually trying to create a, a bright, colorful miniature with vibrant colors, maybe a luminous style colors. Uh, of course, if you're trying to do that against black, it's gonna take a lot more coats. However, this is the Dark Souls universe. It's dark, it's grim. Um, so probably one of the other two is gonna fit us more, black or gray. People like gray because it's in the middle between the two. I personally like black. It's a bit more forgiving. If you, uh, if you miss parts of the miniature, it can then just look like it's a bit of shade. And for the night, I would certainly recommend using black. Now, when we prime miniatures, uh, one sort of absolutely foolproof, well I say foolproof um, method is of course to use a, a primer spray. I've actually got a Citadel uh, black spray here, uh, but of course you can get primers from, from most um, kind of decorating stores or the like, um, so B&Q if you live in the UK, or, or even going to somewhere like Halfords, like a car, uh, a car repair shop, or the like, and you can get yourself a primer. However, I'm not going to be using primer today, and there's a few reasons for that. Uh, this is my first time painting a board game miniature, so my painting background is mainly with, uh, with war gaming miniatures, from a Lord of the Rings strategy battle gaming range, and also from uh, Steamforge other game, which is of course Guild Ball. Uh, because I'm painting a uh, the single piece plastic miniature for the first time uh, I don't want to cover up the detail and if you're a little bit too thick with your primer or it clogs up then you are going to cover the detail uh, also it's cold and wet outside uh, so I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to spray inside the house got a little baby so we're actually going to be ditching that and I'm going to be priming uh, just using uh, the, uh, the paint here, the Abaddon Black from the Citadel range. Now there are lots of paint ranges out there that people would recommend. Of course, most people um, are involved in wargaming and painting through uh, Games Workshop's Warhammer 40K and uh, Warhammer the Fancy Battle Game. Um, so tend to be introduced into wargaming painting through these paints. Uh, I'm no different in that regard uh, because of Lord of the Rings, uh, so I do tend to use these, although there are other great painting ranges out there such as Vallejo and the like. Uh, so I'm going to be using Abaddon Black here to be doing my, uh, my base colours. Now it's really important that we get the technique right because we're going to be just simply putting a bunch of paint on this miniature. Uh, we want to use a slightly bigger brush, so I'm going to use the Element Games Regiment brush uh, here. It's, bit thicker and I've used this one quite a bit so I'm not too bothered about the fact that as you can see there the end's a little bit all over the place uh, but although we're plastering the paint all over the miniature we don't want to put the paint on too thick so what we need to do is we take a bit of paint making sure that we keep the paint towards the end of the brush like so and we're going to apply that down onto the palette and then we want about roughly equal part of water just dipping into the water there and just mixing in 
until those lines have gone. Then you'll see that I will drag the paintbrush, trying to create a bit of a point, removing too much of the excess paint. I can see that's still a little bit thick there on the button black because it is a base color paint, which are a bit thicker. And I'm gonna start plastering this all over the miniature. Um, and I can be reasonably quick with this uh, because we are just priming. Now, what we're going to find, because we're doing thinner coats, because we want to keep the detail, and I'll go over that a little bit later when we get to different stages, uh, this miniature might require a couple of coats. Now, another thing that I do recommend that you do, that you do, which I haven't done here, which I'm going to regret, is I recommend you wash the miniatures before you paint on. Um, so when miniatures um, have been in a mold, they have like a releasing agent, and as you can see, that can prevent the, the paint so it can prevent the paint from uh, building up on the miniature and it can separate. Uh, so obviously these guys have, uh, have still got some of that uh, releasing agent on them. So it's probably going to be a good idea for me to wash those. So I'm going to get the black paint on these now. And then we'll go into the next phase. Which is another easy phase. I'm probably going to give these a bit of a, a, a wash before I carry on painting. Uh, and I'll be going over how to apply a little bit more detail. So we go whilst the model of the night was drying, just enough time to get a bath whilst it's dried off. And as you can see, if I allow that to get into focus, as you can see, the primer has gone on quite well. Now, normally I would probably put on uh, another very thin coat. I put a pretty thin coat on there. And you, when you put on a thin coat, you can still see the, uh, the base color coming through. So uh, on this one, for example, you can see ever so slightly the brown but because of the color palette of Dark Souls uh, Dark Souls 3 in particular uh, I actually don't mind that too much now another reason for starting off with the knight um, one of the reasons why he's uh, the easiest model to paint I think having looked at all of the models that come in Dark Souls the board game is that <coughs> uh, a lot of his paintings going to uh, revolve around a very simple quick and easy effective painting me method which is stood the test of time. Um, as you get more, more advanced, uh, you, you rely on it less, but it still has quite a nice, uh, nice finish. Uh, and that's called dry brushing. Now dry brushing is effectively putting paint on the brush, um, then making sure there's no moisture in there, trying to wipe as much of the paint off the brush as you possibly can. Um, and a good way of testing that is actually just sort of running the brush down the back of the hand. If the color's coming off on the hand, then you've probably not got enough off on the, uh, on the kitchen roll uh, that you're using. Um, now because the knight is mostly armour, mostly silver armour, that means that uh, instead of going round and colour blocking all the different base colours first and foremost, because he has a predominant colour, we can dry brush him. And the colour I'm going to be using for that um, is from Games Workshop Citadel paint base range again, and that is Lead Belcher. Now the reason for going for this is because it's a very kind of dark, um, sort of almost dull-ish silver. We don't want to go for something which is too bright, too vibrant, because it doesn't fit in with the colour palette. So I'm going to give the paint a good shake, like we should do with all of our paints. Uh, and I'm actually going to be using a, uh, an Army Painter small dry brush. Again, you can get specific dry brushes uh, from all different types of uh, paintbrush um, vendors, as it were. Uh, Element Games do one, Army Painter do them, Games Workshop do them as well. Um, and what they tend to be is they tend to be a little bit broader, uh, this one's got a slight angle on it so that you can um, do sort of small detail parts on one part uh, but if you want to go across the whole miniature like we'll be doing here you can do that as well so we're going to get the paint on the brush uh, and again we're going to put it on our makeshift palette down here uh, and i'm going to press quite a lot of that into the brush remember we don't want any of the paint to go down into the uh, the nub of the brush um, otherwise when it dries and hardens you'll actually start to use lose parts of the uh, parts of the brush itself. Uh, so now that I've done that, I'm then going to just get my brush and I'm just going to wipe a bunch of that paint off and I'm just going to test it on the back of the hand. As you can see, there's still a bit of silver on there. I'm going to pick up the knight and I'm just going to gently back and forth with the silver. And what that will do is it will catch the raised areas very effectively. Okay, and it will leave shade in the recesses so as a as a nice uh, demonstration there of the effect you can see that just very quickly very quickly it gives quite an effective uh, finish uh, because again it just picks up the raised areas and with a model which is mostly silver armor like our knight 
this is going to work very, 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 very well. Now there are different phases of painting, uh, and I break them down into the following. You have priming, of course. Uh, then you have your base colours. And base colours is your, is your colour blocking, as it were. You go around, you have a look, and you think, right, okay, what on the model is silver? What on the model is a tan brown? What on the model is skin? Uh, and different people like to do different parts of the model first. Um, I, for example, I like to paint either, uh, depending on what mood I'm in, paint all the skin first, get that finished off. Uh, if I'm batch painting, I'll paint one colour across the entire batch and then move to another colour across the entire batch. There we go. So you can see that he's coming across, he's coming up real well there just with a little bit of dry brushing. Let's get him in even closer. Let him focus. He's doing a good job, I just need a little bit more paint on. Uh, to finish him off. So after you've blocked your base colours, we then do something called shading. Now when you're dry brushing like this, you kind of avoid a little bit of that stage uh, because, of course, you're leaving a lot of the primer as the shaded uh, area. But if you want to add extra uh, depth, to what you're painting, which I'll do and I'll demonstrate anyway, then put in an ink shade on is a good idea. Uh, at the moment I use Vallejo washes, although Games Workshop do some good washes in non-oil and uh, Agrotrux Earthshade, which is a, a browny colour, non-oil is like a black uh, primer, uh, sorry, ink. There we go, get this sword done. And the wash is what a lot of people call the, uh, the magic phase. So you can be a pretty poor painter, but if you can keep your paints thin when you apply your base colours, and just do a couple of thin layers first, you know, don't get over ego and think, oh, I need to cover up that colour straight away. That's not a good idea. But if you can do that, and let that dry, and then apply a wash, a lot of the detail of the miniature will get picked out as a result of uh, what you've done there. Now because I've got a black primer here, I'm actually going to wash the model uh, with a brown, um, a brown ink. And the reason for that is again just to fit in with the Dark Souls palette. And I'll be using uh, the Vallejo, I think it's the medium ink or the strong tone, I think it's strong tone or dark tone, whichever one is the lighter one. Uh, and that'll just make the model feel a little bit dirty, make the armor, armor feel a little bit more rustic. There we go, I think I've dry brushed much of this. I don't think there's too much left. Before we let that dry a little bit, it won't take too long to dry because of course it's already dry brushed. Dry brushing is fantastic, not just for armour, but for things like chain mail. And it's also really good for getting a final highlight on edges of a miniature, which we'll come to later on. It's also a very good way as well on a miniature where you're not really sure what's going on to actually pick out those details. So there we go, we have our, I'll pull that in to there. Hopefully that focuses on him. Of course, I'll show you the finished miniature at the end. And he's coming up nicely. So we're going to let him dry uh, just for a little while. We're going to put on that wash, show you what it looks like after putting on the wash. Um, and then we're going to carry on with the armour. So also really important to make sure you keep your brushes clean after you've painted. Um, and another thing to consider as well is when you're using metallic paint, so paints like this one here, Lead Belcher, the, because of the pigment, because they've actually got almost sort of tiny little bits of metal in them, it is important that you change your water um, before using anything else. And even more important to make sure those brushes are really, really clean. Uh, change the angle so you can start to actually see a little bit closer now uh, some more of the detail. 
Um, so if we hold him up to there, let's see how that focuses. And I would say literally that is about three or four minutes worth of work. I know the video has been longer than that, uh, but it doesn't take too long to get to that stage, as you can say, see. That is perfectly reasonable to actually start uh, using in the game and wouldn't look too bad. Uh, but now we're going to go to the washes face. I'm going to use a, uh, a different brush. Again, I'm probably going to use my uh, older brush for the washes. Uh, now with washes, because they are effectively very thin down inks, um, paints and the like, it's important again that you don't allow that to run up into the uh, nub of the brush uh, because then you will ruin your brush. Always give your inks a good shake, otherwise um, they come out a little bit shiny on the models. Unless you really want that kind of look, uh, I suggest avoiding it. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that the ink gets on the nib, like so. And with the wash, uh, it's because we've just done the dry brush all over, I'm just going to wash this all over. Um, so it's that kind of browny colour. And this will settle in all of the recesses. Another great reason to keep your base colours very, very thin and not to uh, clog up when you are priming. Because uh, if you do that, the inks will have no detail to find. Your dry brushing will have no detail to find. So I cannot reiterate how important that is. Uh, and straight away, you can, we can see here that because of how beautiful these board gaming miniatures are, because of how much detail, I mean, you don't even really see just how lovely they are, I suppose, until you actually start putting paint on and realize that, hang on a minute, there is all of that detail there, which is a little bit harder to see when they are just brown or gray plastics. Having said that, as someone who paints um, Wargaming Miniatures for Lord of the Rings, um, I have noticed that these are lovely plastics. I do enjoy the hobby side of it. I'm not the best painter in the world, but I am much improved. And hopefully this painting tutorial will help you guys out there uh, who have no painting experience at all. That's what this video is for. And with each painting video that I do for each miniature that, um, that we look at, for each guide, I'll look to add a slightly more advanced painting or basing uh, technique just so that you guys can learn and improve as you watch the videos and hopefully these videos will be good to watch whilst you are painting. So I'm pretty happy with the amount of ink uh, that is on there. Not too much because again we've already done quite a bit of the work uh, but if I just bring that in uh, nice and close the camera will focus. Do, 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 do. The camera will focus. There we go. So you can see there the night is coming together nicely. So far, just a black base color, very thin. There's a primer, a dry brush of lead belcher, and then using, you can use Agrax Earthshade to do the same effect as the uh, Strong Tone Vallejo ink that I'm using here. You can see that settled into the recesses, and because the brownie colour it's just given that slightly more aged look to the armour, it fits in with the Dark Souls palette. I'm going to let that dry, and then we're going to come back where we do our second dry brush. Whilst we're waiting for our night to dry with the, uh, with the ink, uh, because that's now going to be his shading completely done, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the bases. Um, so on the board game pieces, you can see that they've just got these uh, these flat kind of style bases, which are absolutely fine. Um, now, in wargaming, people tend to um, sort of sand and flock their bases uh, to fit in with, I guess, sort of grassy plains and most most styles of um, of battle mat or terrain that you tend to see in maybe a historical wargaming or wargaming environment. Um, but we're not going to do that for uh, Dark Souls because these days there are some very very good alternatives um, which would fit in much much better with the Dark Souls universe um, and for that I'm going to be using uh, these generation shift broken white city bases um, so what I'll have to do is I will have to get a knife and actually cut underneath his foot and remove him from the base um, but these are 25 millimeter bases so they're about the same size I'll get them out here uh, I'll just pour a few out to show you. And they've very much got that kind of Anor Londo look to them. Um, they give it that kind of city look. And it's very, very easy when you've got a sort of pre-made resin base like this 
to make it look good in a very, very similar way that we've done with the night so far. You can literally put your base color on there, which would be black, for example, and you can start dry brushing up lighter colors, maybe do an ink in there as well. Uh, for the Anna Londo, of course, I'd probably just go over the bricks with a more kind of, um, I suppose, a more uh, stone-based color. Um, and then highlight up to maybe a bone uh, style color and I'll be using that now I'll actually show you how to do that how to cut a miniature from its base how to pin the miniature into a new base you could just cut it and super glue it but uh, I'll, I'll do a little bit more of an advanced basing video down the future if you want to get your hands on generation shift uh, bases then you can find them on Facebook I'll put a link in the video description below and do make sure if you do go to this guy let him know where you came from hot gates gaming uh, and he might be able to sort something out for you Let's go on to the next stage. Here we go, so the ink has dried and that gives us the opportunity to do a second dry brush with lead belcher from the Citadel paint range. And this time I'm not going to be as rigorous and thorough because we, what we don't want to do is get rid of all of the uh, the slight brown tinge to the armor. What we just want to do is get a little bit of the raised area So it's just gonna be a very very light uh, Dry brush very 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 light across just to pick up the raised area and specifically focusing now on Just the metal parts of the model no need to go overboard Obviously most of the model is armor Which does help this endeavor and it is helping with this painting tutorial, of course. I would absolutely recommend anybody who has not painted a wargaming miniature before, never done any painting, that the night is a good place to start to practice these basic techniques of priming a model, learning how much paint to put on the brushes, looking after your brushes, getting your base colors on, dry brushing, inking, and then highlighting which will come after we have found the other colors. There we go, just a very, very, very light final dry brush of lead belcher. Just again, just to pick out some of the raised areas of silver. And there he is. Again, I'm pretty sure that at this point we could quite happily play with that miniature and have a degree of immersion because of that paint job, which is a higher level than if you're just using the brown plastics. Um, and that is very very simple to achieve but of course stay tuned if you want to see the rest of how to get this guy looking completely badass on to the next phase and what we're going to be doing, trying to do now is pick out the other predominant colors that are on the knight which is a little bit more difficult because he is mostly armor he's mostly silver uh, and because of that we have to of course do a little bit of research which i always recommend if you're painting a miniature uh, which you're not just completely doing off your own memory or fantasy or your own vision you want to do a completely custom paint job which is fine so i've actually got out the knight armor card here and i got out the kite shield before um, and predominantly the other colors that we are seeing is of course the uh, the brown so on my iPad here exactly the same just having a look it's mostly brown leather um, there's a little bit cloth material in there but we are predominantly looking at browns to go alongside which does make things pretty easy um, now different colors um, highlight base shade wash all that kind of thing uh, quite differently um, so to achieve a final color um, it can be a little bit more complicated than perhaps I'm gonna gonna show in this just because the base color here For example looks like that the finish won't necessarily look like that um, But we're always going to start off with that that dark color and we're going to uh, Highlight up to a lighter color here and for this brown We're going to be using Rhinox Hide from the Citadel painting range. So I'll give that a good shake um, And this time I will be using the fine detail brush um, I do have a fine, tea, um, fine detail brush from Element Games, which is perfectly fine, um, but it's the Army Painter one that I'm going to be using here. So a tiny, tiny little bit of uh, paint on the end of the brush, get it down on that palette, and just making sure that none of that's going too far, and a little bit of water. Of course, I've changed my water since the metallics, which is quite important. Good, and I just want to make sure that the paint is at the very tip of the brush. You don't want too much going down uh, the other sides of it. Uh, so we need to go around and we need to get the, uh, the leather parts, so predominantly his belt area, which I'll do now, just very, very, very carefully. This does require a bit of a steady hand, uh, but picking out these tiny little bits of detail will make all of the difference 
to the finished product. So some of you out there might be quite happy to leave it as we've shown so far, that's absolutely fine. Um, but often just these tiny little extra details, which we're also going to highlight up as well, they really do just make the rest of the miniature pop. Remember we're going for thin layers on all of these little brown parts, predominantly the belts, weapon holsters, that type of thing. All of that there. And I'll come back and show you when this guy has progressed a little bit more. So now that we've painted on the Rhinox hide, you'll see that I painted that onto uh, the belt area, uh, and I've also painted it onto the uh, the trousers. There are tiny little leather straps which hold up some of his uh, shoulder armor in place as well. Um, and then I've also been getting around the back of his trousers there, where I noticed that there's a couple of other little uh, leather strappings as well, which would um, which would go over the top of those brown pants. Uh, and as a result, I do like to get a nice bit of contrast in the miniature, so I'm gonna be using a different kind of brown now. Uh, this is more of a kind of red leathery brown I would say it's called Doomball Brown from Citadel it's a really great color uh, we're going to give that a good shake now and I'm also going to use this uh, for the handle of his sword as well um, I find that this makes a more rich kind of leather effect almost like you know like a, something which is like a leather bound book kind of style now this is a bit brighter so it's more red, you can see it there on the, uh, on the palette. Uh, and as a result, because this is Dark Souls, I will be uh, inking over this somewhat. But what this will do, so you have just the straps around here, around the back, which connect around some of the armor on the legs and the knees. And that just means it's not gonna be the same color as the pants, which having looked at the artwork, looks very similar to the browns for the rest of the leather straps and um, like I say when you're painting if you really want a miniature to look good getting little bits of contrast little things which uh, which pop out is a, is a good way to go uh, so now that we have done that round the back as you can see there well, cha -cha -cha -cha. and that will focus uh, I'm now also going to do exactly the same on the uh, on the sword hilt just on the parts where he's grabbing onto. I guess you could do this any colour. I'm going for this so that there's a little bit of continuity between the, uh, the type of leather, I suppose, somewhere else on the, uh, on the miniature. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of that on show. And the rest of the hilt is, uh, is silver. So with that, from what I can see, that pretty much picks out most of uh, the leather armour. That's me done for uh, that side of blocking. There's also some cloth on this miniature. Uh, now it looks like from looking at, the, um, at some of the artwork that this is a very, very dark blue. Uh, so we'll move over to that right away. So although we're going to be going for a, a dark blue here, it is so, so dark, uh, and again because of the colour palette of Dark Souls, that I'm actually going to um, be using Eshin Grey, which is very dark grey, which is actually really great when you're highlighting blacks. Uh, and I'm going to be using that first, just to hit some of those cloth areas. Um, and I have reasons for this. I want this to be like a grey, dark blue, and I'm always worried when I, when I paint blues, you know, if you use blue as the base colour and you go up to brighter blues, it can look very, very bright very quickly. Uh, so instead, I want to keep this cloth as dark as possible. So there's going to be quite a few washes, I imagine, on here. Just painting down the cloth which comes down around underneath his belt and behind the armour on his right leg. Now painting cloth, uh, particularly things like capes, is probably one of the sort of more fun things to paint. Uh, because cloth is quite dynamic and if you've got a lovely miniature like we have here, then when inked and highlighted, it's going to look very, very, very nice. So that's that part done. We'll then move on very quickly 
round to the front. And we want to cover all of these silver areas that are on show. Of course, because we dry brushed it, the base colour for much of this is now silver, and that's another reason for applying the grey at this point. It's just going to cover over that silver before we start highlighting up the blues. We don't want any of that shininess to come through. We want dull colours. You'll get sick of me saying it, but that's Dark Souls. Dark Souls has a very dark palette. Now I've seen some other paint jobs that have been floating around on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, you can follow me, Hot Gates Gaming. Um, and I'm also on Facebook as well, where I'll put up pictures of works in progress of these miniatures before the videos of how to paint go out. Uh, but I've seen some other paint jobs, and fair play to people for giving it a crack, especially people who've got no painting experience. It can be quite a daunting thing to give a go if you've not done much of it. Uh, and I have to say there's quite a lot of bright painting schemes out there. Great, so now that we've put on the Eshin Grey and, uh, and we're quite happy with where the leather is, where everything else is, we're going to give those areas a bit of a wash again just to pick out some of the detail against those, uh, those base colours. Now previously we used the Army, it wasn't Vallejo uh, washes we were using, we were using the Army Painter uh, Quick Shade range. Uh, these, that way, there we go, uh, but instead of strong tone I'm actually going to use dark tone, it's a little bit darker uh, and that's because we're going up against uh, browns now, we want something which is um, going to provide a little bit more of a contrast, contrast is a key consideration and I'm actually going to use an old uh, detail brush here because we want to be neat, uh, we've already washed and then re-highlighted some areas of this so we don't want to go back over and we're just going to paint into those little bits of detail that we did before so on the belts and everything and again that's just going to provide a bit of contrast for when it comes to highlighting and like I say at this stage I think a lot of you guys would probably be quite happy with your miniature uh, especially if you've not done any painting before you'll probably look at it and say well, this looks done, it's effective, uh, I don't have too much left to do, and I wouldn't blame some of you if you want to stop now. Uh, but the next phase, although it can be a little bit trickier, I'm going to show you some simple ways based on what we were showing you before, just to really get an extra little lift um, on the miniatures, and that's the, uh, the highlighting phase. Um, which will be coming up next. Now highlighting, you see you've got your base colours. There we go, there's our dark tone going on the ashing grey, really darkens it up, makes it look almost like it was black. And when you do this on cloth, again what happens when you use inks is that you get little poolings. It's important that those poolings are where uh, you want them to be, right? Um, no point. Uh, having pools of ink in the raised areas, you just want to drag it down into the, uh, or drag it up depending on what you're painting, up into the areas where you want to create the depth and the, uh, and the contrast. You don't just want it to sit all over, not at this stage anyway. Not when we've already, you're really heavily focused on the armour. So just getting in all these eshing grey areas, all of the rhinox hide areas, all of the doomball brown areas, sort of sword hilt and the like as well. And anywhere else as well where you think uh, there needs to be a little bit more contrast, a bit more depth, so maybe just sort of around the back of some of the armours. Try not to get on the front face of the armour with a darker time because of course You'll be highlighting those up anyway, and you just want to go in the areas where you think uh, where you think there's the shadow, of course. So you know, under arms, in gaps. You don't want to get too much. Just in there, up inside, around the neck, in those crevices around the elbows. And there we go. I think we can be quite happy with him. We'll bring him up just to show you the progress so far. Uh, 
and all in all this miniature has taken less than 15 minutes so far and you could leave it there but we're going to let those inks dry and then we're going to start applying our final highlights which we'll talk about next up so the ink is drying and we're going to bring out the Cantor blue which is the dark blue uh, and I'm just going to be applying that mixed in ever so slightly with the eshing grey there just on the palette there's not a lot of the eshing grey uh, and I want when I'm highlighting I want my paints to be ever so slightly thinner and I really want to make sure that it is at the end of the brush so I'm doing this remember because we want a slightly blue kind of uh, trim as it were on the cloth so what I'm doing is just dragging down the very sort of watered down blue just to the edges of the cloth trying to keep it away from the recesses I'm just focusing on those raised areas where the light is catching one of the best ways of doing that is just make sure that you pull your brush away from the dark crevices and towards where you want the paint to be lightest really when you're highlighting and again, by not having a kind of a blue base colour, this is going to create the effect of the blue cloth being even darker and even more worn. And that's really what we're going for here. And of course, because of the, <laughs> I'll say it again, the colour palette of Dark Souls, washes are going to lend themselves really, really, really well to this whole process. There we go. So that's those blue areas, not a million miles away from being done. I think there's another one up by his neck there, just hitting the raised area. And underneath his armpit, In the little gaps in between his elbows, just anywhere where you feel there's going to be a little bit of a little bit of cloth on show. We don't need to overdo it. Uh, a lot of this is abstract. Uh, now that we've done that, whilst we wait for that to dry, and this is a really good thing about sort of blocking colours ever slightly, uh, we're now going to go and we're going to highlight the brown slightly. Now the first stage of highlight is actually getting the original colours. So if we bring him up here, the first stage is going to be getting the original colours and just going ever so slightly over the top, not too much of the browns uh, and then we'll get a lighter colour for the, uh, the final highlight. So I'll get down, I'll do that right away. So when we do this kind of edge highlighting it's very important that we just focus on the, uh, on the raised areas like we did before with the blue. We don't want the slightly lighter colour or the non-inked colour to go down into the recesses because we want the contrast between the two. Um, so we've already done that for the Doom Ball Brown there. Now we're going to do the same with the Rhinox Hide. But this shouldn't take too long so we'll keep everything on shot. Tiny bit of paint there onto the palette. A little bit of water. Mix it in. Hopefully you all enjoying doing this all the same and we just want to catch the raised areas of the belt just ever so slightly and again we're doing this because you'll get contrast between the uh, what I'd consider to be the uh, the inked areas and the raised areas and then on the cloth same again avoid the recesses just use the base colour again, ever so slightly. And the reason why we use the base colour again is if you just go straight for a highlight above, above that, you're going to get almost too much contrast. And then the highlight looks very stark and unnatural, which isn't what we want. We want the highlight to look nice and natural. And uh, this is how we'll do it. Now we could dry brush, um, but at this point, probably not a good idea. There we go. So it's just little dabs 
over those areas where we inked before. I'm quite happy with that. So now we're going to mix in um, another colour, um, not Balthazar Gold. We're going to get a colour called Mournfang Brown, uh, which is a Citadel colour. You can find it. This is uh, one of the best colours I feel in the range. Have I already got it out? I haven't already got it out, so I'm going to go find that. And we'll bring it back up and we'll continue highlighting those browns. Here it is, Mornfang Brown. I could not do without. Uh, so I'm going to give that a shake up. I'm going to get my detail brush. Just get a little bit of that and I'm actually just going to mix it in on the palette with my Rhinox Hide. I'm going to get a little bit of water just get that in there as well and then I'm just going to run the brush along just dragging it with a spin just to create a bit of a point and we're going to very much just be getting the edges here of our night just very 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 steady hands required for this and the reason why we've done the 50-50 is because then you get a nice blend between the two colours. So it's still lighter, the Mournfang Brown has made it lighter. Um, but it's not too stark, it doesn't look like it's too then dissimilar from the base colour. It just looks like where the light is catching. In Dark Souls of course, very limited light is catching against those brown areas. I'm just going to go around and do that, same on the cloth. The cloth, those areas will be a little bit more established. There we go, and there. We'll do this on the little bits of leather which are holding up the shoulder armour. good all coming together nicely and then of course we need to do uh, around the back on the cloth around the back so I hope you've all been enjoying this paint through video giving you a little bit of an idea of how to get started with painting your Dark Souls the board game miniatures hopefully you've been painting along at the same time there we go. And that is that. And you could definitely leave it like that. Uh, and from a highlighting point of view on those parts, I am going to leave it like that. And that is again because of the nature of Dark Souls. Would it be in grim and dark? we don't want the colours to be too bright and therefore we don't want to overdo our highlighting we just want just not to pop and another reason um, for that as well is that uh, none of these are the main colours the main colour is the silver uh, which I am going to come on to uh, in a second and the reason I'm going to be coming on to it in a second is because that does require one last final uh, edge highlight to really make everything pop before we do that we're just going to highlight up on the blue and I'm just going to get a colour here called Calgar Blue it's a bit of a lighter blue as you can see there and I'm really really only going to use a tiny tiny bit of this very 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 thin and watered down not a lot on the brush just to very 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 gently slightly catch the edges of the grey blue areas. We don't want to overdo this. This really is oh so probably a bit too watery there. Probably too much on the brush so it ran down into the recess but you can always correct that. And this is just going to give that final little bit of a pop to the cloth.
just make it stand out that little bit more again. Probably just need to thicken that paint up ever so slightly. Although I'm very cautious uh, because, of, like I said, I don't want to make this overly bright. I just want to make it look like those edges are just catching the light. That's all we're going for. Edges catching the light. Well, I'm no, by no means the, uh, the best painter in the world. I have won a couple of painting competitions um, at the Nova Open in the USA. I won the best single painted miniature for a mounted Legolas model that I painted. And also won best painted army at that same event for my Rivendell Knight army. Yeah, but there are much better painters out there than I. But hopefully this video is helping all you beginners out there just to get an idea about how quick and simple it is to achieve a very kind of basic, basic look. Like this. And with that, blue is highlighted up, brown is highlighted, so we, here we go. Here this is where he is now. So you can see he's pretty much looking the part now. I'm just going to finish off with some edge highlights on the silver. And for that, I'm going to use a color called Rune Fang Steel. This is a very, very, very bright. A silver paint again it's a citadel paint I tend to use citadel paints because as I said at the start of the video these are the paints that uh, got me into the game uh, and I'm going to show something different for this I'm actually going to go back to uh, a little bit of very light dry brushing so I'm just going to mix up some of that it's a very 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 thin kind of gloopy paint but it's got a bright pigment um, so we want to try and harness some of that and I'll mix that in on the palette. And then we'll just rub off as much of that as we can. And we're going to use the dry brush point. We're just going to start very, very, very gently just catching the edges of any area where we want to be slightly brighter. So for example, I think the sword, just running it along the top of the sword like so, probably makes sense. Probably one quick brush on the helmet, on top of the helmet, and on the top of the shield, and quickly there, maybe on the raised area of that shield, nice and gentle, just get those edges. I'll not overdo it, we don't want too much bright. This is Dark Souls. I just want to get the angles, the angles of the metal. So on the knee pads where the knee bits uh, stick out, that's a good area to do this. Get a little bit more on, and then rub it off on the kitchen roll. And then just on the chain mail, just at the very bottom, on any sharp angle, that would be catching the light. You just want to get that little bit, a little bit on there. Good. And with that, I am quite satisfied that this guy is ready for a campaign and breakthrough. There we go, that's him. So about 15 minutes of work in total, not the greatest painted miniature in the whole wide world, but some simple, effective techniques to get your knight for Dark Souls of Board Game ready. I think what we'll do now is a quick breakdown video showing him off and running through those techniques real quick for everybody who doesn't have the patience to sit down and watch a full length video of how to paint. 
And there you have it, our first painting tutorial for one of the Dark Souls, the board game miniatures here on Hot Gates Gaming. Possibly the easiest of the miniatures to paint and hopefully showing some of you guys out there who are complete beginners when it comes to painting miniatures some real simple effective techniques and procedures you can follow to get your miniatures painted up quick and ready for some Dark Souls, the board game campaign action. So for those of you that didn't have the patience to watch through the full video, here is a quick breakdown of what we did to get our knight to the standard that he is now. First of all, because these are plastic molded miniatures, it's important that you give the miniature a good wash with some fairy washing up liquid or the like before you start painting the miniature. The next step is to prime the miniature. There are different ways of priming the miniatures, but because this is Dark Souls, we want a nice dark, dark background and color palette. So I like to prime with black. You can use primer sprays for this, but of course, if you are in wet or cold weather, that can clog up the miniature. And with these being plastics and plastic board gaming miniatures I was quite keen to just do paint straight out of the pot. There are many great painting ranges out there. Most people tend to come from the background with war game miniatures of using Citadel paints from Games Workshop but of course there are lots of alternatives out there such as Vallejo or Army Paints or anybody else as well. We did some thin watered down coats using and some brushes bought from Element Games uh, of the black primer just to get things started and allow all of the rest of the paint to stick. The next technique that we used was dry brushing. We got the color lead belcher from the Citadel painting range which is a darkish silver and we applied that to the palette and then wiped all of the spare paint completely off the brush so it's completely dry. We then very very lightly dusted that over the whole miniature to create that silver effect and create some recesses. Dry brushing picks up all of the raised areas and this miniature in particular is a really good one for using dry brushing on. We then gave the, what gave the miniature a wash and by that I don't mean we stuck him in the bath, we gave him an ink wash, we were using Army Painter Medium Tone which is a, a brown ink and we washed the miniature completely with that which is a great way of picking up those shaded areas even more but also for Dark Souls it also gave a very slight brownish dirty tinge to the armour making it look pretty used. Once we did that and the ink had dried we did a second dry brush of the lead belcher over and with that that's the armour mostly finished. At which point we have to try and find the other block colours to pick out and base colours before we proceed. And on the night miniature that is mainly the browns of the leather the trousers and also uh, the cloth which you can see there as well. We decided to use Rhinox hide for the trousers and some of the leather and then Doomball brown for any of the leather straps or the weapon uh, the weapon handle itself just to give a little bit of con contrast both are Citadel paints we also used Eshin grey which is another Citadel paint to do the base colour on the cloth make sure that you always keep that your paints reasonably thin and apply multiple layers so that you don't cover up too much of the detail and this is important when you get to the next phase which is of course inking we used the Army Painter Strong Tone this time uh, which is a darker almost black ink which we did over the top of those, picking out those, uh, getting it into all of those crevices and creating that contrast. Once that had dried, we then applied the base colours over uh, the raised areas once more, allowing contrast between the shaded areas and the raised areas. And then finally use some paints, which you'll see in the last five minutes of the video, just to get some final edge highlights. To finish off the armour, we used Runefang Steel, another Citadel paint. And just to show off how that works, we simply dry brush that, not across the whole miniature, but just across some of the uh, raised areas uh, that we felt would be catching on the sun. So for example, of that, we've got the end of the sword, the top of the helmet, uh, top of the shield and also the hard angles um, on some of the armor on the legs and the greaves and the like. So I do hope you enjoyed this basic how to paint video here on Hot Gates Gaming. The next one should be the Warrior which will come in advance of our first playthrough here on this channel. Hope to see you here for more Dark Souls the Board Game content going forwards. I'm having a good game here. Hope you guys back at home are having a good game. Don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe and I'll see you very soon.